All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the People Person podcast presented by Good Time Media. I am your host, Wyatt Metzger. And today I am honored to welcome on a very talented singer songwriter, singer songwriter, Jessica Ricca. Her new song, Hope It Hurts, will be out July 23rd, and you can pre save it now. Jessica, thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Do you go by Jessica? Jess? Is it like, like your close friends call you Jess, something like that? Everybody calls me Jess, but it just so happened that my Spotify name is Jess, so now I'm Jessica. I mean, my Spotify name is Jessica, so now I'm Jessica. But you That kind of sucks. You just have to stick with that now? But whatever you want to call me, I will answer to it. It's fine. Can you change that on Spotify? Again, it's just a really big process. <laughs> not worth it. Yeah, not worth it. It's Might as well just change your name and just go with Jessica. <laughs> go with Jessica. <laughs> All right, so hope it hurts. Talk to me about this song. What's it about? How did it come to be? Um, so Hope It Hurts is, I wrote this song about somebody that I never actually dated, but I was with them for a long time. And it was just a very toxic relationship. I was always promised that we were going to date eventually. Um, but in reality, it was never going to happen. I should have just seen the red, red flags. Um, so I wrote the song Hope It Hurts, basically to take back my own power and say, like when you see me doing well and like you see my name in lights, I hope you remember what, how you treated me and what you did to me. And I hope that you hurt for it. And it's a very, I mean, it's kind of aggressive song, but it felt good to get all my emotions out in, in that one song. And now I played in the car all the time and I, you know, scream the top of my lungs, yeah. all of my things into it. So yeah, as, that's- As you should, yeah. Mm-hmm, yep. Yeah. It's, um, it's like my my child this song i really like this one yeah it's like therapeutic to an extent i guess i feel like a lot of songwriters say the same thing they're like it just kind of helped me get through a situation and then it just happened to be a song so i can put it out to people exactly yep now does this person know this song is about them he like is it very obvious that it's about this person um he still follows me on social media and if he doesn't know what's about him then I think he's kind of dumb but I don't want to give him satisfaction so I will never actually say who it's about but I think if he's smart then he should know it's about him yeah I'm sure he can connect the dots there now uh I'm always interested because a lot of the like the best songs or like the best almost well, well written songs come out of some type of like bad experience some heartbreak so from a business standpoint, have you ever thought about hiring someone be like, hey, like break my heart a little bit so you can write another good song, like manufacture some adversity? But I think I do it well enough for myself. I get way too attached to people who aren't good for me. So I end up like doing it to myself, but I have gotten a decent amount of DMs where they're like, let me break your heart so you can write a song. Yeah, I mean, just trying to help. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, getting my heart broken is, so many times is kind of worth it because the results with the music that I make is kind of killer. So <laughs> I will keep getting hurt if it means that I can make good songs. That's got to be a weird experience where you're like, this sucks. I hate that I feel this way, but I'm going to make a great song out of this. So it's like, you can kind of turn it around right away. Yeah. I, I think I finally relate to like Taylor Swift now. Just yeah. I mean, I feel it's, it's, that's weird. Cause you kind of almost like if life's going well, you're like, damn, what do, what, what do I write about now? Like, what, what's next? I don't think I've written a happy song in a, a while. I've maybe only written once, one or two, but it's the better songs are the ones where you're hurt from them. And yeah. those are the songs I listen to. Yeah, me too. So I, I understand that. Now, if you want to outsource that kind of thing, just let me know. I'm sure I know enough like douchebags. They'll take the paycheck. I'll pay them. We'll, we'll figure that out. I get a cut of the song. Boom done we'll wrap that up make it work <laughs> um now what was the hardest part about writing this song you say it's kind of therapeutic it's like it's almost like just getting over that experience was it hard to write the song or was it kind of just getting everything out i wouldn't it was more like relieving to write the song than than yeah. hard this did happen a, a decently longish time ago maybe like a year ago where i was like healed enough from it but 
I was I hadn't written a song about it yet and I was like you know what this would be a great song so I sat down with my friend who's also part of the record uh label with me her name's Caroline Oakley and we kind of like bounced ideas off of each other and wrote the song together she was a big help because you know sometimes you just get stuck but it was so relieving and then we hopped in the studio for it the emotions were like blaring everyone loved it we made this killer music video too which is really intense as well and the whole process was just like very therapeutic relieving and i don't think i got i haven't been upset about this dude in a while it's just more like a yeah i'm i'm doing so much better now that you're yeah it's a big middle finger to you be like all right yeah suck on this i got a great song out of this yes (laughs) win the breakup that way um Talk to me a little bit. So you're signed to a record label, correct? Yes. What's that like behind the scenes process like? Because like people like, obviously it's very exciting. It's awesome news. But like, I don't even know what that really entails. Like, how does that help you? How does that help your career? And what's that look like behind the scenes? So I was very like skeptical. The uh, You know, the music business is very hard to live in. But um, I entered this competition because somebody I knew from middle school was doing marketing for it and so I entered and it was in December and I won the competition so I won like a cash advance and a record label. Nice flex, nice. It was was sick and um, like the first time that I met with them I went to Virginia because that's where the CEO lives and he has a studio in his house Um, and like within the first two days I'd become like really really close with the producers um, and, and the CEO and it's just like a big family thing now so I I get so excited when I get to go out to Virginia or sometimes um LA they're based in there too they're all over the place um but it's it's become like um I feel like I belong in something now when I was doing it by myself it was great it was fun but I didn't have that support and I just love getting reassurance from people that's like my favorite thing is if people tell me they like something I'll just I'll be so happy so it's it's great to have a group of people who just support you and are there like it's work but it feels like you know fun Mm -hmm. and are you given like kind of free reign like you come to them like hey like i got this song about this shitty guy like what like can i just run with it are you given free reign in that direction much given free reign we all give each other ideas or like if they think that a lyric will be better i'll change it because if i agree with them that it's just like a big group effort but they never want to take away from like your true self and whatever you feel. So they always want to make sure that you're comfortable with what you're doing and they don't want to ever make you do something that you don't want to do. So I'm very thankful for that. And they're, the label's just, they're called C2 Records and they are basically made for the artists. They don't want to like screw anybody out of their own money because that's a big thing in the industry. So I'm just very thankful that I found them somehow because I would have probably been going to graduate school and I didn't want to do that. Yeah, I, I get that. So like you said, you were doing it a lot by yourself before the record label and everything. So you went, how long have you actually been putting out music and like just singing on the internet? Um, For probably for like years, I've had my YouTube channel for like 10 years now, but I think 2015, 2016, I would post like videos for my family and stuff like that, my friends, but nobody would watch them until summer 2020 when Corona was a big thing. And then I popped off with the Hey There Delilah video. That's the, yeah, that's the video I, I first saw you from. I was like, oh, wow, this girl's good. And then, yeah, then I reached out the first time. Yeah. So I, that was a big help and like a big confidence booster to get me started with the music. So then I knew nothing about Spotify and releasing my own music. I just like found the first distributing platform I could find and released my own single. And without any marketing, that is my best song. Sweet Connection is my best song on this I've ever had. I didn't do any marketing for it. it somehow yeah. ended up on playlists. And I was like, I am, I'm doing this whole thing again with marketing and it's still going to be super hard to reach what Sweet Connection did. But crazy. Yeah. Uh, was there a moment that you remember like as a kid when you first realized like, hey, like this, is, this music thing is for me. Like this is what I want to do. Um, well, it was funny because when I used, I go to Disney World a lot. My family's a big Disney World family. And they used to have this, um, kind of like a ride or traction where you would basic, it's like American Idol. You would audition and you can perform in front of people and people vote for you. So 
I was like 13 and I signed up. They put me in the show and I like I won. And I was like, this is great. I performed in front of like 200 people. And then as soon as I walked out after I won, there was these random children like, can I take a picture with you? And I'm like, I feel famous. This is great. Yeah. And then I was like, you know, shell shocked. I was like, I want to be famous now. And, but I never really took it too seriously because my parents always told me, go to college, you got to get a good job. And so I never took it seriously until probably last summer. Uh, interesting. Now, I have to say, because people will get mad at me if I don't, I hate Disney and ABC. I'm very, I have a strange vendetta against them. It's a long story. We won't go into it, but I had to just put that on the record. I couldn't let you get away with the Disney story. Uh, <laughs> it's a long story. Trust me. You don't want to hear it, but, okay. but we won't, we won't go into it. I just had to say that because people will get mad if I didn't mention it. Okay. Um, if so, you say your parents obviously wanted you to like get a job, go to school, all this. Did you, did you go to school? Did you finish college? Yes, I went to Penn State. I graduated in December. Um, I rushed out of that school. I loved it, but school just isn't for me. So I took a lot of summer classes, got out in December, and it just so happened that as soon as I finished school was when the contest rolled around. And I was like, if this isn't divine timing, then I don't know what is. Yeah. So I applied to some grad schools, didn't really put too much effort into it. Sorry, mom and dad. And I didn't get in, which was what I was hoping for. So... <laughs> We're taking the music route because, you know, that's time sensitive, I think. Yeah. Now, than- did you have a conversation with your parents? Be like, hey, like, I like I grad school is not for me. I did. It was after the first trip to Virginia after I won or after we got the record deal. And I told my dad, like, when we were leaving, like, I don't want to go to school. I don't want to do it. And he got mad at me and I didn't talk to him the whole car ride home. And I was like, I called my mom. I'm like, dad's being mean. I just want to be a singer. And then eventually... A couple months later, he saw what I was doing. He saw the um, the music and the music video, and he was like, "You know what? If this is what you're gonna do, just give it 100 percent." And I was like, "Thanks for the support. That's all I wanted." Now, now, now that story sounds more realistic. Some people I have on, they're like, "Yeah, like my parents are like, uh, we don't really understand it, but we support you 100 percent." Like most parents are are gonna say that maybe on the surface, but behind closed doors, they're gonna be like, "What the hell are you doing? You can't do this. You can't be a singer. You don't want to be a pop star." It's like I feel like that's more realistic where like it takes them a little time to come around. Definitely took them a little. I told them you have two other daughters who are normal and are doing regular. <laughs> so just let me be the rebellious daughter and, and, you know, get tattoos, dye my hair. It'll be fine. You have two other normal daughters. Yeah, let, let me be the outlier. You, you need a crazy kid. So the other ones look even more normal. Exactly. There you <laughs> go. Um, how has, so obviously you get kind of not new to it, but like how has, TikTok, how has like just the music industry like changed since you've been putting out music? Because you just started on YouTube, just putting up covers and stuff. How yeah. has it changed? Well, TikTok's like a huge thing now. Like a lot of the songs that I listen to, I found from TikTok. And I think like a lot of people are starting to notice that the marketing on TikTok is, is going to get them really far. I haven't looked into marketing on TikTok. I kind of just throw my song on there make hella yeah. videos and hope that somebody else will make one too but i like when you think about it a lot of the famous singers now like the kid Leroy was off tiktok he made the song about addison ray yeah uh, like all these like i mean dixie d'amelio addison ray they're all making music too tiktok's like a, the big the next big thing so as as much as i probably am annoying my followers i am throwing all of my music on there it's just to try as you it. should i mean that's just a smart way to go i feel like now I, I do need I need a, a clip for the so thoughts on Dixie D'Amelio's music career. I I think Dixie D'Amelio is so unapologetically herself. She's cool. She knows that she's kind of boring, which is great. But listen, the music, girl. I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> I think I think you do know how you feel about it. I don't like it very much. It's very catchy, you know. It's like mindless writing. I the lyrics. Yeah. The lyrics are just mediocre. They're there. Yeah. Um, I, I take a lot of like pride in my lyrics and I want to make sure that they sound like real and relatable and not stupid. Not that Dixie's lyrics are stupid. Look, they're kind of stupid. I, I, again, this is no hate on Dixie. I don't blame her for just trying to chase the bag, make some money, but like lyrics are kind of stupid, but they're pandering to her audience. Her audience is like 10 year olds. If I was in her position, I'd be doing the same exact thing. So oh, 100%. Yeah, great for her, but I personally 
I don't know. I think I might write better music than Dixie D'Amelio. Yeah, I don't think you're going out on a, on a limb saying that. So I, I'll stand by that one. That's what it's. It's so. I mean, you got to give her some credit because I think she's self aware enough to know it's not great, and <laughs> she's still willing to just put it out there and know she's going to get shit on by everyone. But like that, that takes a lot. I wouldn't be able to do that. And like knowing I'm just getting publicly criticized, knowing the second I put this song out, everyone's going to hate it. That takes a lot of guts. So I kind of give her props for that. I like that about her. It's because like she just does, like she just doesn't care. And like I strive to not care that much because she's, look what she's doing. She's living her life. But maybe I should not care as much and see what happens. Yeah, be more like Dixie, I guess. Um, Are you always in songwriter mode? Like, are you, like, just, like, you hear a sentence, like, that's a line, that's a lyric? Kind of. I mean, it's, I can't, I can sit down and write a song, but it will never be as good as when I'm, like, driving in the car, and I think of one line in my head, and I'm, like, ooh, that's great. So I, like, pull out my notes app, write down the one line, and then I'll come back to it when I'm feeling, like, in a creative mood, and I will, and I'll finish it. So, like, it's hard for me when I would go to uh, meet up with the record uh, label, to sit down and write a new song because my mind isn't like working like that. It's just, it's yeah. random. It's the most random words and lyrics will come to me. So I have notes apps uh, in my notes app, just like 10, 15, 20 random lines. And I'm like, I'm going to finish that later eventually. And I'm like, these lines are great. This needs to be finished. But so not, I'm not usually always there. It's just. Yeah. Random. Do you, is there anything you can do to like help you get in that mindset? Like a, like a pump, like, all right, I got to write a song, got to help work on this music. Is there anything you can do to kind of get in that frame of mind? Maybe drink a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like that would help. Like I, like I blog. Yeah. And I write better when I have a few drinks in me. It's true. I mean, a lot of people involved in the record label are very young so we do tend to like drink a little bit and then make music and then we listen to it the next day and we're like that was kind of fire like yeah. that was great and I think the confidence and like me not holding back happens when I have a little bit of alcohol on me so if I have a drink I might be able to make a really good song <laughs> yeah um here's there's a personal question to me when you're driving with your friends who like can't sing or like don't sing aren't good singers are they afraid to sing around you they're not but i always try not to sing because then when i do they're like oh come on and i'm like yeah. hey, you do your thing i they're not afraid um but they know that like the second i start singing they're gonna they're gonna feel a little bit bad <laughs> that's the thing like when I, I i'm in the car i love singing in the car just jamming out in the car I can't sing, not even a little bit. But when I'm with my friends who can sing, I immediately just shut up because I'm like, I know you're better than me in every sense of the singing world, so I'm going to shut up now. But it sucks. I, mean, I, I hate when people feel bad, so I try to make everybody always feel perfect all the time. So I'm like, you you take the, the mic. You do yeah, you. all you. <laughs> I, that, that's nice. That's very kind of you. Um, have you ever thought about rebranding yourself as something more modern like kid jess or like da jessica no <laughs> i don't think that it I, works i was thinking maybe my name is just my name and a lot of people like you know have cool like doja cat yeah so, doja cat's cool like, but i don't know i was always just jess jessica and that was it so i never thought about it i also don't think i come across as like someone tough enough to have like a cool name you know i don't know i'm just i'm just me and that's the one thing i like is i like to always be myself so i never want to put on a like a mask so like you'll know me as me just like everybody else knows me i'm not going to be like little jess or something <laughs> I, that's that's tough because like i feel like when you're trying to like get your name out there and like get your music noticed it's easy to be like try to be this super like outgoing out like crazy energetic or just maybe just a different person than who you actually are mm -hmm. and like how do you manage that how do you like stay true to who you are that's probably a tough question but like yeah, yeah. how do you stay you i never really noticed that i was just always like I'm, I'm never gonna hide anything from anybody i always you see a comments on my like youtube videos like i love that she's just herself and she doesn't care and that's true like i really don't care too much what people think about me if, if you like me great if you don't you don't i'm very open about my mental health i'm very open about when when i'm feeling good when i'm feeling bad because i just like to keep people in the loop and i never want 
I, I don't want to be like a fake person. I, I want everybody to see me as their friend, even if they don't know me or they'll never meet me. I just want them to be like, I'm normal, just like you. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I like that. Um, what's your favorite song from uh, Bo Burnham's Inside? All Eyes on Me. That's my favorite. That's one. the one. I saw your cover of that. That's nice. That's a good one. It's a good song. I, I probably listened to it way more times than I needed to in the car. And but it's just it's so it's so pretty. I don't know why. I'm just like addicted to it. That whole that whole special is just incredible to me. Like I listened to like the whole album, just like start to finish, just without even noticing. I'll just throw it on and I'll just yeah. listen to the whole thing. It's it's incredible. It's I, it's he's so talented. I find myself watching it like over and over again too. Because I'm like, how how did he do that? But yeah, he's crazy. Um uh, before you become a big famous superstar, is there anything you want to get out in front of so you aren't canceled for it later? <laughs> um, I don't know if I've did anything cancelable. In, in oh, past. we all have. I'm sure there's something. Ah, <laughs> dress up as Snooky for Halloween, but I'm Italian and from New Jersey, so I guess it's not really that bad. <laughs> but That's fair. I don't know. I don't think I've done anything. Not that I'm like an angel. I probably have done something, but just. That's why I'm like scared. I'm like scared. What if I've done something that I didn't even know that I did? Yeah, exactly. And everyone's like, cancel Jess. She's the worst. And I'm like, like, I don't even know what to say now. Cause I'll just yeah. That's why I just like, I just apologize for things. Right. I'm, I apologize for every single tweet I've ever put out. First of all, no one likes them. So like, it doesn't, no one's, I act like no one's seeing them and they're just the dumbest things are my twitter is just stupid i tweet the dumbest things i'm sure there's something out there people are gonna be like you suck i'll be like i'm sorry i i do suck i agree i apologize for everything that i've done before the age of like 17 and that's that's it i don't right. even remember my childhood so <laughs> yeah yeah you apologize for everything i've done and will do in the future there just blanket statement you're good <laughs> can't be canceled now <laughs> we come back to this clip this podcast and get more downloads so Honestly, I might want you to get canceled later so they can come back to this clip. Yeah, and they could be like, see, Jess didn't even know what she was doing. She, she's so cancelable. We got oh. her. There we go. Um, uh, can you teach me uh, about uh, unit rates? Oh, my God. You saw that video? Yeah, I saw. That's hilarious. That was my first, like, viral-ish video. We were like, oh, that went like viral? Wait, that was in eighth grade. That was like that. It, it had like 50,000 views, which was that's I, crazy. But I thought I was like, wow, what was I? I was like in seventh or eighth grade. I think I was in seventh or eighth grade and it was a math project. And we put that on YouTube and then a whole bunch of people watched it because they were looking up like, what is unit rate? And then ours was like the first video. And now it's so embarrassing, but I can't, I'm not going to take it down because it's just funny. Yeah, but you can't take it down now. Oh, but it's so embarrassing. <laughs> I assumed it got a bunch of views like after your YouTube channel blew up and then like people went back to watch your first video. Uh, surprisingly, it had like 40,000 before I even. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. Uh, so some people like will make fun of me and comment about it. Like, oh, like unit rate. And I'm like, well, I know you've been here from the beginning then. <laughs> yeah, it's OG. That's why I love like when I interview people, go back to like the first thing they've ever done and see if they remember. Cause you always do. You always remember your first one. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, I want to do a quick game here. This is just basically name association. Who would you want to collab with? I'm going to go through a list of people. You pick between two people who you want to collab with. Okay. First on, first two up, Lil Dicky or Lil Huddy? Lil Huddy. Wow. I like Lil Dicky, but I think Lil Huddy's more my music type. Okay, that's fair. I was watching a little Dicky show right before this, so I'm in the little Dicky mindset. Love little Dicky. Shout out to him. Um, little Huddy or uh, Jaden Hostler, whatever his last name is. Jaden, and he actually he follows me on TikTok, and I'm waiting for that DM. But I know he's all up in Nessa Barrett right now, so we're not even gonna talk about that. But probably Jaden. Okay, Jaden or Nessa. Nessa, probably. <laughs> wow, jump and ship quick here, Nessa. Okay, I know the answer to this one. Nessa or Dixie D'Amelio? Nessa. Nessa or Charlie D'Amelio? Be on her first single. Charlie. Hate to Good say call. it. For marketing reasons and probably because she'd get hella views on her first music. Exactly. Music it's, it's a business decision. I appreciate that. Dixie or Carlos from Big Time Rush? You don't know Big Time Rush? 
Oh, big time rush. I was okay. thinking. I think he's getting canceled right now. So is he? I don't know. I think people don't like him. I can't keep up. Uh, <laughs> I apologize. I apologize for that question. Anyone listening, I apologize for that question. Uh, I'll just scratch that. Dixie or Jack Harlow? Okay, you're gonna hate me, but I don't think I've heard any of Jack Harlow's music. Jack Harlow slaps. Good music. Wait, I'm what? not like the biggest Jack Harlow fan, but I just know his big name. One of or two of his songs, but I just don't. I can't think of it. Top, I'm gonna get like made fun of for that, but I don't know him. So Sick. I guess we'll we'll stick with Dixie. He was he was uh potentially dating Addison Rae for a little bit. He was in that whole. He's like he's got like the curly hair and just like he's just hilarious. Yes, yes. Yeah. I know. Um. Him. Okay, so you're choosing Dixie or Charlie? Oh, Char- yeah. Let's choose Charlie again. We're choosing okay. Charlie. Charlie or Justin Bieber? Justin Bieber. I have to. Now, this might be the toughest one, I think. Justin Bieber or Billie Eilish? Ooh. I think I'm going to have to stick with Justin Bieber. I do love Billie Eilish, but her music is – she started off like with music I really, really loved, but her music is kind of straying far away from what I used to love about her. So Really? I still love her music. I still love her, but in a, like – vibe standpoint i think me and justin's music would work better interesting um how how do you like kid Leroy and justin bieber's new song i love that song i think it's great it's i think it's too short i think there should have been more yeah song and i'm like it's over already like we just got started but i really do like that song i think it's a great one i feel like i'm gonna get a little hate for this but i when i first listened to it i couldn't tell where justin came in yeah they kind of sound pretty similar yeah, I was like, wait, did Justin is Justin even in this song? Like, maybe he just like produced it or something. I don't know because I didn't hear him. And then I listened to the second time. I was like, okay, that's him. But they kind of sound similar. And I think it's like he kind of like Justin kind of took him under his wing. I think like the Kid Leroy, like he has great songs, but yeah. BFFs him and Justin, which is good for them. But. Yeah. Uh, did you see that clip of Kid Leroy performing it live? That's just like atrocious. Yes, I was like, oh, I feel bad for him. <laughs> yeah, that, that was tough a bad day like sometimes i have bad days too but or maybe he just some people just they're really talented at what they do when it's in the booth and then yeah it's just but have you performed live much not a lot recently i performed at my uh, boss the ceo's like wedding party kind of which was really fun it wasn't a lot of people but the last time i performed live before that was like high school plays and oh wow that was a while ago so but i love it i I, I don't really get nervous, which is like people probably think I'm lying, but I, I just like, it's fun. It's fun for me. What's that like the mindset between like performing it? Like if let's say for you compare it to filming for like a YouTube clip or performing live, what's the ch- difference? So like if I'm filming for a YouTube clip, obviously I'm by myself. I can make as many mistakes as I want and I can do it over and over and over again. And, but performing live, I think you get a lot more emotion and you get like hyped up and pumped up and you get that adrenaline. So you might even like sound better. I think I maybe sound better singing live anyway. Um, I get some comments on my YouTube videos, like where's the emotion? And I'm like, I, I'm by myself in my 300 square yeah. apartment. I, I'm trying all I could give right now, but I, I think live performing, if I ever get to do that again in the future will be probably one of the highlights of the, yeah is there what's the best concert you've ever gone to one direction that's honestly one of the only i've only went to two concerts it's one direction and ed sheeran when i was like 14 you only got to two concerts yeah it's really it's really sad i wanted it's to go not to- a concert vibe like it's not your place i don't think like my i don't know my friends and i we always like plan like let's go to this one and then we just never do it i was gonna go to a lumineers concert last year before COVID hit and then I was like, oh, like canceled everything. So that was gonna be my first yeah. like big girl concert, but it didn't happen. Concert trick: when once you see a concert you like, impulse buy two tickets. So then you have to force one of your friends to go with you. But and it's like it's already here. You can't say no. Yeah, know? exactly. Like like, what are you gonna do? Make me go by myself? No, they're not. They're gonna be a good friend. And they're gonna go with you. Here's a free ticket. You know. Done. I would yeah. Your ticket. I mean, you should probably charge them a little bit for the ticket. I would, they're not that good of friends. Yeah, well, I don't know. I might give it for free. Because uh, it depends. If they don't want to come, I'm like, come on. You, free, total, no charge. Just come with me. You need somebody to come with. Um, If you're, let's say you have your own uh tour ahead of you in the future, pick your opening acts, two of them. 
even though like they might be more famous it, than well in this future hypothetical you're way more famous than them oh, goodness but like that would fit the vibe that you want your concert to give off i just i feel disrespectful putting bigger names in front of me no it's but just a confident you gotta be confident you know let's go with like Nessa barrett and Jaden duo and then like madison beer or noah cyrus Ooh, like that. I like that pick. I do like Noah Cyrus a lot. So yeah, in there. Uh, I, just, I I doubt, honestly, the way TikTok works, there's no way Nessa and Jaden are gonna be together long. I give it like a year, maybe. Yeah. Too, I do too. And we're both we're gonna get two amazing like heartbreak albums from that. Uh huh. I like the second it happened. I'm like that's not gonna last. But for the time being, if you're making good music, enjoy yourself. Oh, I mean, yeah, I love seeing, like, power couples because then you know, especially when they're singers because you're like, this is going to be a great album. Or they're happy ever after, perfect, awesome, good for them, or we get good music. It's a Mm win-win. I always – I don't always tend to go after musicians, but I like going after musicians not only for that reason, but it's like we can make music together, but if we break up, we can (laughs) make about each other, and then we'll both win from the situation. There we go. If you're a musician, listen to that. Take notes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are your goals? Like, what do you do? You like, how do you keep track of where you want to be? These are short term goals you're trying to reach long term. Like, what's what's the plan moving forward? So short term goal wise, um, I, I guess I just take it like one song at a time. I think I'm, I'm releasing this single. I'm going to be releasing one more single and then I'm releasing an EP. So those are like the short term go- goals. Like, just trying to get that music out there. Um, I, I'm not a very organized person, so it's just kind of like all over the place. But my end, I, I within like the next couple of years, I just want to get like a top 50 song, which is hard. But I don't know. I think if I believe in myself, I might be able to do it. We'll see. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, what was I going to ask? So I think that that's important because like a lot of people ask that question too. And they're, they either like, have like, I want to do this, this, and this at this time, this time, because they're like very like type A people. I'm not that person or like, I kind of like you, like I'm pretty more sporadic, like day by day. Yeah. I have like a vision of where I want to be a couple of years from now. I don't know how I'm going to get there, yep. <laughs> figure it out, but I don't have like, I got to meet this goal, this goal, take this step. It's like, mm-hmm. I take baby steps each day. As long as I'm getting better each day, I'm in good shape. I think if I got a more organized approach I'd probably be more disappointed in myself if I wasn't hitting milestones like that I planned so it's like I have a general idea of what I want to do don't get discouraged if things don't happen the way you think they are and just stay on track and you know everything will be okay how many uh songs are you sitting on right now you're like all right I could release this if I wanted to um there's five songs on the EP including hope it hurts and I I have like 10 to 15 half finished almost finished maybe half of those are like already recorded need to be um mix mastered so let's say like 15 20 right now in my notes okay. when's uh what's the schedule for i know the song comes out the 23rd when's the ep come out um hmm, that's that's a good question um it's it's done it needs to be mixed and mastered i would say latest october Okay. If you if you're looking for a day to release it, October seventeenth is a great day. It's also my birthday, so maybe Friday. Yeah, I maybe let, let me check. It might be this year. I might have to because Fridays are the best day. Ah, ever. yeah, it's Sunday. That sucks. We'll do like an early birthday release then. There we go. Well, okay, so explain to people why that is because all new music always comes out on Friday. What what's the reasoning behind that? I, I couldn't even tell you. I, I literally have no clue why that's a thing. I think it's because new playlists are made by Spotify. I have honestly, I asked the wrong person. The people who like have released music before that are in the record company with me tell me just release it on Friday. I'm like, all right, everybody does that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to listen. I, I have a lot of faith in other people, which sometimes is a bad thing, but I believe them. So yeah, maybe be careful with that moving forward. Just like be a little skeptical sometimes, but Trusting, really, trusting people's fine. Yeah, I should stop. <laughs> um, Cause yeah, I also noticed like some TikTok people, I call them TikTok artists, but like they're just musicians. Um, they release their music on like Tuesday and it'll skyrocket to number one because I think the method is like 
all the new songs are kind of played out by that Tuesday. So if you drop a new song, you're like the only song out there. So it gets a bunch of plays and like goes to number one. See that? I saw somebody say like releasing on Tuesday. I'm like, why are they releasing on Tuesday? They're so stupid. But now I'm like, I gotta get it. I get yeah. it now. So, I mean, if you want to change it up and release on a Sunday, my birthday would be a great day. So, just throwing that out there. What was that, 17th? The 17th. Okay. I'll get in. <laughs> um, final question. I ask this to everyone who comes on. Answer it however you want, whatever floats your boat. What gets you up in the morning? Um, the fact that my car needs to be moved by 10 a.m. There we go. That, I, that's, that's a great answer. That's the most unique answer I've received. So thank yeah. you for that. Oh my car, I'm going to get a ticket. So then I'm up. I'm like, I'm up already. So what am I going to do? There you go. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Do you want to real quick, just let people know where they can find your music, where they can find you and stay up to date on stuff. Sure. So I'm Jessica Ricca. My Instagram is Jessica Ricca. Um, my music comes out. My music, my song comes out Friday, July 23rd, 12 a.m. Pre-save is in my Instagram bio um yeah find me on tiktok jess ricka i'm all kind of the same all over the place youtube jessica ricka find me if you want to i'll be there awesome well thank you so much for coming on i appreciate it oh no thank you very much yeah dream girl dreaming i be dreaming missing all the days you got me feeling i said i love you baby no i mean it hey yeah dream girl i be dreaming